Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint these birch trees in the fall. I'm working on a 12 by 16 canvas, um, though you can choose any size that you like. I've also primed and prepped my canvas that's already been triple primed uh, with acrylic white gesso. And I'm going to be using a number 50 filbert brush just for working on the background. I got it a little bit wet and I'm just going to go over the colors quickly here and I'll also have a full list below the video in this description box. So we've got titanium white, ultramarine blue, sap green, neon violet, neon yellow warm, and yellow ochre. So I'm going to begin by taking a little bit of white and some of my blue and I'm choosing this color here purposely because I know that it's complementary with um, the yellow that I'm going to be using today and I'm also going to play up this blue by adding some of my um, neon violet so we're going to have some soft purple tones going on and some peach tones as well and everything's going to just work really beautifully color wise in this painting So I'm not out for a perfectly smooth background. I think it might be some mountains in the back maybe. And then we'll have reflection of a lake down below. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more blue. This time I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that violet. And we'll start blending that in. And we just kind of do a little crisscross with my brush here. And I'm being a little generous with my white because I know that it's going to dry darker than this. So I want to make sure that it doesn't dry too, too dark. I don't really want to overblend either in any one spot. I'm just going to switch over to my other hand here. slide in to that green with the blue and the white and I'm going to cut across again just cut across like this and I'm going to pull down on all those colors we'll do this a few times until we get the color that we want and the right reflections. I'll be a little bit more generous now and add a little bit more of my purple violet. So a little push and pull down and then a light pull. So you kind of get this uh, blurry grid I guess so it's this way and this way creates a light little blurry looking grid is the best way to explain it. And I'm going to come in now with more purple, blue, a little bit of green. I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush. my number 30 brush here I'm just using if you're curious ultramarine blue by Arteza wonderful brand of paints I highly recommend them so I've got my number 30 compared to my number 50 I used earlier I got it a little bit wet 
gonna take my no more green now, just my blue, purple, and white. And I'm gonna be coming over this area here, of course, but I still wanna have, so if you barely touch the canvas there, you'll get that ripply effect. I still wanna have uh, the colors reflecting in the bit of water showing here before we come in with our foreground. Again, I'm going to take more blue, green, and purple, make a nice dark color, and then I'll just go over this line again here. And I'm going to lightly turn my brush over like this. So instead of pulling and flicking down, I'm going to turn my handle right side up and I'm going to pull and flick up this way. I'm going to go into my purple, my blue, a bit of white. Just wanting to have a little bit of a darker base here for my trees before I come in with some pretty gold colored leaves and foliage on them. <clears throat> okay, a little bit more of my blue and purple and another layer. This time I'm just going to add a little bit here and there. And then very lightly just pull across. All right, so now as that's drying, I'm going to start working on the next layer of the foreground here. And I'm going to add a dark line. So it's, you get a really nice dark color here without having to use black if you take the blue, green, and violet. No white. I've got a little bit left over in my brush there, but I'm not using that part of my brush. I'm just going to use um, the top of it or the end of it here. So going to kind of go sloped so I'm going to start down here kind of go gradually start going up on a slope like this Okay, then I'm going to come in with white, purple, blue, white, and I'll start the first layer here, right next to, as close as you can get to that darker line. This will be our shadow and base color um, to build up our yellow leaves on. I'm going to use a little bit more water at this point. Because I've got a lot of paint in my brush that I need to work out, and this is a great time to do it. I'm going to just work thin to thicker. And just pick up a little bit more blue here, water, and any purple I have left. Just to finish off that section. Okay, so now it's time to start coming in with some foliage and I'm going to be using uh, one of my mop brushes. Um, I, always, I have so many different mop brushes, some angle ones, round ones, and oval ones. Now this is an oval. This is uh, one inch by Princeton. These are really nice brushes. 
they don't shed at all. They're just great. They're not expensive. They're just very affordable. Good quality brushes if you're looking for one and not sure which brand to get. And you can find these online, of course, and at Michael's. So what I want to do is start gradually building up some foliage here. And I'm going to start firstly with a little bit of white, green, and blue. I'm sort of making a shade of almost like a phthalo green here, which is a really pretty frosty looking bluey green, though this isn't a winter painting, but it is late fall, as you can see, all, well, in the thumbnail when the painting is done, all the leaves will be down here, so I guess it is late fall and you could have a frost, but I'm just out for creating some color right now. I'm not thinking about frost, and, and this is just going to be the first layer, so I'm just going to go across here, and of course green and purple are very complementary as well, so we've got a lot of complementary colors going on here. Now I'm going to come right here and add another little bush. I'm going to take any leftover, I've got just a little bit of that violet there with a touch of sap green and blue. And I'm going to go right here, very dark. And I might even add a little bit more, reload my uh, palette just to make that a little bit darker. In fact, I'm just gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna add some Prism Violet. This is very close to dioxazine purple, maybe just a little bit lighter than that. curious about the neon violet I'm using. It's actually called Luminous Violet by Holbein and these are really really good quality nice paints and a little goes a long way so they are more on the pricey end but you get what you pay for. Um, they're transparent, they're great for glazing, filtering, um, or just adding that beautiful pop of color that you want to your paintings. Okay, so I'm going to just add a little bit more depth and shadow here. It's going to help having that dark purple violet in there. So we've got a light purple violet and a dark one, or prism violet. Technically it's called prism violet, but I like to try to stay away from black in my paintings. And I talk about that a lot. It's really easy and the obvious choice to go to for the darkest parts in your painting, but trust me, your paintings are going to be a lot, have a lot more depth and beauty to them and uh, life to them when you make a dark color with all the other colors. So there's lots of options out there for creating dark, dark colors other than just going for black. All right, so I'm liking that. I'm just going to tap, 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 tap. Oh, down here close to the water's edge and then just a little light pull very gentle most of this is going to be covered up anyways from um, our big trees that we're gonna come in with oh I'm so excited to add those big trees I love adding big huge trees in a painting most people are scared by it but um, I just think it's exciting like making big changes in my paintings. Okay, I'm just going to cut across again here, bring back that dark, dark line. I'm going to wash this brush out. Don't forget to wash your brushes out in between use. It doesn't take long for that acrylic to dry and build up and ruin your brushes. I just want to add a little bit more uh, straight lines and edges here at the water. So I'm going to use my number 12 flat brush. And I'm just going to take those dark colors, purple, blue, and green. Just going to clean this line up, go across, 
and then pull down. So the filbert brush is okay, but it can cause a little bit of uh, roundness that isn't always uh, very symmetrical. And most of the time, I, you know, I'm not worried about making things look perfect or symmetrical. You guys know that. I'm more of a free, loose painter, but um, there's certain things that bugs me, so I want to make sure that I just tidy that up a little bit there. I've just washed my brush out and I'm going to go into blue again with a little bit of white, a little bit more blue here. And I want to make sure that this is going to pop behind our birch trees and all that yellow. I want to make sure that we've got some beautiful blues going on. Take a little bit more white this time. I'll start right here. So just lining it up kind of and not a, not pulling and flicking like I normally would because I don't want to hit that um, foreground or that line we have. Okay, I'm going to just add a few branches here before we come in with our foliage. And I'm going to be using, uh, let's just say zero zero size liner brush, but you can use any liner brush that you want. And I'll take those, mainly the purple and the green and some water on my brush, of course. And I'm going to pull and wiggle. You can barely, barely see. Let's just, you don't have to worry about making perfect branches. We just need to be able to see a little bit here and there. I'm going to take a little bit of white just to make sort of a muted gray version of that color. And this will just add a little bit of a highlight so we can see some, a little bit more here. Okay, now it's time to come in with our yellows. And I'm gonna be using another oval mop brush. I've got a few of these on hand because once you get them wet and wash them out, they lose their shape. So it's, it's a good idea to have a few. If they're on sale, go ahead and pick up a few. And the first color I'm gonna be taking is my yellow ochre. And I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap lightly, not to lose that. You wanna to tap to load your brushes like this so that you keep that shape. And I'm just gonna come in we're going to go slightly over. We're going to start partially on that green and the sky, or not the sky, whatever the background is. I guess it could be sky, but I think it's, I think it's a mountain. But it's blurry and lots of blues and fog going on, so we're not going to see any detail. It's just a blurry, bluey purple mountain background that I think is really pretty. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going here all the way across, right little taps. Okay, then I'm going to take some white, add a little bit of that, and we'll add some highlights like this. So notice how I'm, I'm not holding it like this to tap. I'm using it this way and turning it sideways so that I can create some narrower looking trees and I'm going tap, 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 down, up and down. I'm moving my hand up and down as I'm lifting and tapping. Reload my brush. And then we're going to have a gentle, just get a little bit more in there, a gentle reflection. Isn't that soft and pretty? It's getting that rounded look, but oh well, that's fine. Okay, so now we're going to work on this bush here. It's going to be the same 
um, order and layer. Tap, tap, tap into the straight yellow ochre. And I'm going to start, I'm going to turn my brush this way instead of this way because this is a bush and bushes are more low laying and then the trees are narrower, if that makes sense, guys. Okay, just very simple like that. And then if you want, you can kind of just do a very soft and light pull. And that'll give you a little bit more indication of some branches in there. Okay, I'm going to go into my white now. Very gently, I'm not going to push too hard to kind of stir it up and make that lighter shade for my highlights. And then I'm just going to add a little bit to the top. Right on the tops here. And you can see how this is already drying a little bit um, darker. So while I've got this brush and I'm adding highlights, I'll quickly go back here and just start adding some more. Same way. I mean, you can go back in between later on if you need to. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just come right under here. This is just some grass or a blurry part. It's out of focus where we have those leaves. And we'll just add same colors. This time I can just kind of push and wiggle here because I'm going to be using my brush differently. I'll take a little bit of white in there. This is going to be really lit with sunshine here and light so I'm not going to shy away from the white in this area How's everyone doing so far? I hope you guys are following along all right and you're enjoying this. Let me know if you have any comments or questions below the video in the comments section. Just going to go over to my flat brush here, get a little bit of water on it, and just take a little bit of blue, purple, green, like that shadow color, but see how see-through it is? Because you've got to have some water in there. It's got to be transparent for our shadows. So I'm just going to go right under where we left off there. We've already got the blue purple underneath, but this is just for a little bit more depth, just a little bit more like that. And I'm just going to, again, clean up this line, just pull across like that. It's that purple in there with the green that's going to make that beautiful color. I'm going to go right here as well. I'm going to try to have these nice clean lines because I'm loving the play on light and shadow. And the colors I just pulled in a little bit of that yellow but i like that so i'm going to leave that happy little accident so i always think of bob ross when something like that happens Okay, I've got a number two round brush. Feel free to use any small brush that you like, either a liner or a round, a small filbert, um, just for starting to come in with our first layer of leaves. 
So what I want to do, because they're in shadow, I'm just going to take a little bit of my violet and yellow ochre. Maybe a little bit of blue in there. A little bit more yellow ochre, and I'm just going to take a little scoop like this. And I'm just going to start dotting and dabbing. And I'm not going to think too much about or plan where they should be and if they look like leaves. All you're doing is applying dabs of these colors. And it's even better when they're not overly mixed. Because then when you take a little scoop of this, a little scoop of this, then you get lots of different shadows going on and it saves your it cuts the time in half right up just a little bit more of my little ochre. It's all going to dry a little darker. So I just want to make sure that these dry to the right color for the shadow area that they're in. And notice we haven't used our uh, neon yellow warm, but it's coming, so wait for it. That's going to be our finishing color and touches to this painting. As we get closer here to the foreground, I'm going to switch over because it, it's a lot thicker in here. Our leaves are getting bigger and it's starting to look a little bit more solid. So I'm going to switch over to a number seven uh, round brush. It's a little bit pointy on the tip. I, I love this brush. It's great because I can make things wider if I want, but I can also just let off and just use, uh, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's, it's on the lines of a cat's tongue brush. And you, if you've never heard of a cat's tongue brush, you're probably wondering like, what the heck is that? But they're really great brushes. So I'm going to take a little bit of white along with, and not mixing, just taking a little scoop of each, white and my yellow ochre, and I'm going to start kind of making little, I'll try to do this in, well I could do it in slow motion through the video, but then you won't, you won't hear me, but I'm going to, and I want to explain as I'm doing it, it's going to do this really slow, kind of twisting. Like you're doing a little dance. You want to change it up though, and you want to do it quickly. That way it looks, you're not thinking too much about where they go. And that's when it looks most natural. The less you think about it is what's going to make it look more real. And I don't, don't make them all the same size. We know we've got some trees in here, so keep in mind you're going to have to go over part of these, so don't spend too long trying to make the perfect leaf. It's going to make your painting look like you, kind of like you tried too hard, and you're going to lose that natural, free-flowing, vibe to your painting, which I know comes with time. And when you're just learning how to paint, it's tough to be in that place. But it's just something to think about and know that that's where you need to get to really loosen up and make your paintings look a bit different. Okay, take a little scoop here. I'm going to make these ones just a little bit bigger 
So I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure. And this is just the first layer. I'm gonna come in with some more, especially that beautiful yellow warm. See how important it is to have that bluey purple underneath. Okay, so this is a good start for now. Um, I'm going to Take a little bit of white with that yellow ochre, make it a little bit lighter, and come up a little bit, a little bit higher here. And because I'm going to be layering with trees, it will be a little bit more difficult to go back and add my yellow warm and white later on. You can do it. It's just easier to do it prior to layering with your trees. So I'm going to do the first or the background highlights with my yellow and white now. And then I'll add the trees and then I'll come in with a light yellow uh, for the foreground leaves. So my oval mop brushes are both wet, but I can use them still just for this final. Preferably, I'd like to use them dry, but I can. I'm just brushing it out on the towel to try and dry it a little bit more. Preferably, I'd like to use a dry one, but I can definitely do this. It's just going to be a little bit less... Um, soft looking but that's okay so look at how pretty that is especially with that purpley background so a little bit of white and yellow warm i'm going to start adding some highlights here you want to make sure that you have more white than the yellow because the whole idea is to make it dry nice and bright. You want those highlights to really um, look nice and bright. So note I turned my brush over because they were all starting to look the same. So if that starts to happen, it's because your, your brush is just kind of morphing into a shape, but you, you don't want all of your trees to look the same. So you want to take the time here and there to just tap it out and change the shape of it. Do a very soft, soft pull here. And then we'll come in with our highlights right here. And then right down here as well. wash my brush off and now we're going to come in with our trees. So the first tree I'm just going to use because it's a narrower tree and I'm just going to use uh, this is a number two filter brush and I'm going to take 
purple, green, a little bit of blue, and just a little scoop of that yellow and white without over blending. I've got all those colors on there so that when I pull it down here, I'm going to get a few different tones going on. Okay, I'm going to scoop those colors up again. So I'm pretty good for up top there, but it's at the base here that I need to, so I'm just going to start right here. And I'm, I'm studying, well, minding where it's wet, I'm trying to be careful here, just using my pinky as a guide so that I stay within the range I want to. And then I'm going to slightly bring it out on either side like this. Make it a little bit wider, slightly wider there, and then just clean up this edge a little bit so it's more solid and we're not seeing the bushes through. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to take that yellow with a little bit of white in there and I'm going to start Lightly pulling and dragging, barely touching. Take a little bit more white. I want to really focus on adding this highlight on the left side of the tree. And this might be easier to do as the paint dries, uh, depending on if you're kind of having trouble adding this. And it might be the pressure you're using or the amount of paint. Maybe you don't have enough paint on your brush. I like painting wet on wet in this case for the bark because then I get all those mid-tones. So I'm lightly just grazing over and picking up a little little bit of the darker color underneath. I'm just going to, because it's see-through right here, I can see that line. So I'm going to go over with a little bit of that purple with the white in it. It's that white that's going to make it opaque. And then I can come over with my dark, dark colors. I'm just going to Add a little line, cut across here. So it lines up with a shadow. Okay, so now we need to add some branches. And I'm going to use, again, my little liner brush. And I'm going to make sure I have water on my brush with this. And then I'm just going to start very lightly on the tree, twisting and rolling. I can't emphasize enough how you don't want to apply too much pressure. Now, I know when you don't, we feel like it's kind of out of control when we don't apply enough pressure. We don't really know where it's going to land and what it's going to look like, but it'll look a lot more natural this way. Especially when you add that water, a little bit of water really helps. And then I'm just going to kind of pull and flick a little bit of, I don't know, moss or something there. And maybe we've got a, a larger branch right about there. come in and just behind here add a few little branches 
like liquid and just with the same color. I'm not using any water for this. I want this to be opaque and really show up. So just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to add a few little notches in the, in the tree trunk like this. So just little dabs. Few little things like that. Actually, we have some branches that are coming out the front here, so it looks more realistic. Okay, now we can start on our second tree, and the second tree is going to be thicker. So I'm going to use a wider filbert brush for this. It's a number 16, 12 or 16. It's rubbed off on here, but just a, a bigger brush. You can definitely use a flat brush if you want. Um, and I'm going to use the same colors. So I'll start with my purple, green, blue. I'm going to start with this first, and I'm going to leave hmm, about an inch in between. Reload my brush. Now this is coming closer in the foreground to us. I got a lot of green there and I want to add more purple to it to keep within our uh, color balance and complementary colors. I'll just cut across here. Then right away I'm going to take my yellow, a little bit of white, I'm going to pull down, slide my brush, and then I'm going to turn this way, and I'm going to just lightly pull just start getting that round look. I'm going to kind of push gently and fan my brush out into that little bit of white. And when you pull and drag the brush across like this, it gives it that kind of satiny look that the birch trees has, or the birch trees have. And this will be easier to do as it dries. And I'm going to come in from the other side, try to. I think I'm going to wait till this dries a little bit so that I can add the proper highlights and shadows. If I'm really careful, but see, each time I do that, what's happening is I'm, I'm pulling in a little, I'm picking up a little bit of that uh, highlight color. But I want to make this tree a little bit wider anyways, so I'm going to come along the edge. But I definitely need more shadow, more contrast on that side. So just using the same colors, purple, green, and blue. waiting for that to dry a little bit. And I'm just gonna go along the bottom here with a little bit of watered down purple and blue. And add some more shadows. So just a transparent layer of blue and purple. 
Okay, we can still see the leaves underneath. I'm gonna take my number 12 flat brush and get some white on here. A little bit of that warm yellow. And I'm gonna come from this side, line it up, pull very lightly, turn your brush over. So it's starting to dry a little bit and it's making it easier for me to do this now. So I want it to look like kind of sappy, papery, like bark that those beautiful birch trees have. And it's nice to have those spaces. Now down here, we're gonna have a shadow. Some shadow colors on there. So I'll just take a little bit of my blue, purple, and white. And I'm gonna add a little bit down here like that. Maybe a little bit more on the blue side. I'm going to use my round brush again, my number two round brush, and I'm going to take some more white and yellow. And I'm just going to do light little scoops. Picking a few areas here where it's going to be really bright. Okay, then I'm going to go down the other side with some purple and blue. So I'll go across and then sometimes I'm just going to drag my brush right down. Okay, then I'm going to take a little scoop of purple, blue, and green. And I'm just going to very lightly start adding some little dabs randomly. And I can go all the way to the edge. And then we can start coming in with some branches here. And these branches are using my round brush because the tree is bigger. I'm going to add some little notches here. Right, the tree is bigger, so you can use a larger brush.
to add a little bit of this violet here. Start playing up on some beautiful pops of color. Not over blending anywhere. And then a little bit of blue along with that. Just little dabs. So it's nice and dark here at the bottom. And we'll go back with a little bit of water and purple. And start to add a few little branches. Some coming from the front, maybe some from the back, the other side of the tree. Okay, now I'm going to add some leaves with a clean brush, my yellow warm and white, around the base of this tree here, where we're going to have some bright sunlight. And again, I'm going to go over the background here, play up a little bit more on the gold. A uh, little bit of a highlight here. Now another thing that I want to do that birch trees have, they'll have those, those patterns where it's dark little line and then there's a few light ones around them. They kind of look like little eyes. A little bit of that blue and white. Purple and blue. I'll add some of those markings down here as well. And with a clean brush, more white, and I'm going to just pick a few areas here. To add a brighter highlight to. And then I'm going to come in with a big tree right here. I'm going to use my number 12 flat brush. And I'm going to take all those colors and we'll space it out a little bit further this time so about two two and a half inches and this one's going to come down to right about here a little line across for a shadow
I might have a little bit of that violet in there because I'm running out of purple. And I'm going to take more violet, just a little bit of white, a bit of blue, and I'm going to start pulling across these little scoops and then kind of down like I did before. a little bit here as well right up on my blue you can take a bit of blue purple and white or use a bit more of one than the other if you like let's go ahead and apply a little bit to this tree back here wash my brush off and when I wash my brush off it kind of splits into sections like this and I like to use that to my advantage for creating patterns in trees it's going to tap into a bit of yellow a bit of white and I'll start doing my little scoops It helps to give it that round look, but it also creates the pattern that the bark has on birch trees. And if you want to get those splits in there again, then just tap your brush. So some areas are going to be a lot more in highlight than others. We'll just pick a few areas. And then down here, I'm going to go into my bluey purple color because the light is starting to soften a little bit into shadow. I'm going to get those, the darkest color back again. Okay, and then I'm just going to try to do those patterns just with this brush and we'll see and kind of use this brush to dab corner to make those little patterns you could also use a liner brush like I was before or a round brush I'm 
just going to add a little bit more width to this tree. Put my white on there. Every once in a while, I can go like that too, and that adds some more depth. So then I'm going to make light yellow, and I'm going to choose an area or two that have brighter highlights. And I'm going to go over to my liner brush to make some more little lines and squiggles like this. All those highlights and shadows. Okay, I'm going to take my Purple and blue, that's the violet I'm using. I'm going to add little darker patches here on the bark, the base of the tree. Add a little bit of green in here. The green and the the purple make, I mentioned that earlier, they make the darkest color. And then I want to come in with a little bit of a shadow highlight here and I want to make it kind of look like it's twisting around. A little bit of a twist here. And then a little bit of some darker spots right in here. I'm going to add some branches. Oh, I think we'll have a little notch right here. Just add, oh no, how many, how many we feel like. Have an interesting one that kind of comes out here on the side. Wiggle, wiggle, little pulls. You could outline this a little bit if you want. I'm just going to add a little bit more black lines and dabs.
Okay, so I'm just going to add some more highlights here. The base of this tree for my leaves. Just with a little, little filbert brush, or you could use, like I mentioned, round brush, liner brush. And if you don't have the neon colors, don't worry at all. You can use any yellow that you have with a little bit of white. And if you want to warm your yellow up, say you've got a cooler uh, temperature of yellow, then just add a little bit of orange or even a little bit of pink. I'm gonna play up on my yellow right here. And maybe just do now that it's dry back there, I can add a little filter, either with a bit of water, but preferably dry brush. And even with these shadow areas, we'll still have some that are a little bit more, a little bit brighter. Let's take a little bit of that yellow ochre. I even add a little bit of a beautiful violet in there. Okay, let's go ahead and add some more highlights. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my white. I'm going to tint it a little bit. I'm using my brush full width and then kind of turning it. Play up a little bit more on the blue here. A little more blue and violet.
just going to do a light little dust of blue over here. And add just a few leaves left on the trees, some of these branches. Just a little bit there. A little ochre, white, little dabs, the same way we added them down there. A little bit off to the side here on another tree or maybe they're coming from that branch take a little bit of that yellow warm with white And then some maybe in shadow. So I'm just going to mute that yellow warm with a little bit of yellow ochre, blue, green. And we'll just add a few here back in the distance in shadow. this up here and we can see what's going on at the top I'm gonna add a little bit of violet green and go up here a little bit more shadow and that'll make a little bit more sense as to why these are a bit more in shadow too I'll add my final little branches and we'll call this one done. Liner brush, water, any of those dark colors or all of them. Take a little bit more of my yellow ochre and violet. And just take a little bit of that yellow that I've got there. And add a little bit more. I feel like I just need a little bit more up in this section.
Okay, so just my final highlight here. I'm going to tap over where we've got some sections that are a little bit brighter. Tap and blend a little bit here. And then add a little bit more of the white. And then right behind the tree right there. And I'll call this painting all done. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was such a pleasure to get to share with you. And uh, let me know if you want to paint along. Leave a comment or question below. Happy painting, and I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye, everybody.